What's up, YouTube? Welcome to Man About Cake. Woo yeah. yeah! I'm your host, Joshua John Russell. I'm a sugar artist and a pastry chef and your resident cake slayer. Joining me is my all-male crew, which is not weird at all that four guys would just be hanging out talking about cake, but that's what we do. So today, this man is all about floral wreaths. It's a trend that's popping up on the internet. It's kind of all over the place. I enjoy it. So I'm gonna break it down today. We're gonna build a cake, and we're gonna make some sugar flowers and put the whole thing together. So let's get started. Okay, so let's get started building our chocolate cakes. We're actually gonna do a three-tiered cake. I'm gonna do a nine-inch round, a six-inch round, and a three-inch round. By the way, if you want these recipes, you can click the I at the top of this video, or all the recipes are in the description. I'm gonna start by leveling my cakes. You could do this with a ruler. I kind of like to be a little bit more organic. So now I'm just gonna divide this cake in half so we have two layers, so then we'll end up with six layers. Very sticky cake, very sticky. So now we're gonna fill the cakes with a little bit of chocolate ganache, chocolate buttercream, and the drizzle of actual chocolate in between the layers. This will give a nice crunch component for later. Extreme chocolate close-up. I'm just gonna continue building the cake. Layer of cake, layer of ganache, layer of buttercream, drizzle, another layer of cake, until we've got all six layers together. This cake is gonna be epically good. I need a hype man. Remember in the 90s, like the guy groups that had like the one guy, had the super deep voice that never sang, but at the end, oh, was like, girl. girl, this cake's gonna be so good. <laughs> Can you make my voice deeper though? <laughs> girl. This cake's gonna be so good. I'm gonna put that buttercream in between the layers just like you'd like it. Thick too, girl. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so now we're gonna get them in the cooler and he'll firm up and we'll be ready for a crumb coat. So now that our cakes have firmed up and they're chilled, I'm just gonna give it a slight shave on the side and then I'm gonna level the top. All right, now we're gonna ice it with just a very thin layer. This is a crumb coat, trusty scraper. And then we'll do the same with the top. Just come across it. Done. So now that our crumb coat is completely chilled to the touch, we are actually gonna do the final coat now. So it's the same buttercream, just chocolate buttercream, but we're gonna bring it all the way out to the edges. I'm gonna start with the top, and then we will ice the sides. So now the final coat is done, I'm gonna put this back in the fridge to chill before we apply the modeling chocolate. I'm gonna do the same thing to the other two tiers. Whoa, she's heavy. So now that the cakes are, they have their final coat and they're chilling in the fridge, we're gonna talk a little bit about modeling chocolate. You wanna make this the day before and let it sit out overnight so that it hardens. And it literally hardens, like a brick. So we're gonna actually knead this into a moldable paste so that we can roll it out and wrap it around our cakes. Just a little elbow grease. I have very hot hands. There's nothing wrong with that. Just like a little oven, can't help it. I have a high metabolism. Anybody want to taste it? It's like a giant slab of Tootsie Roll. <laughs> Delish. You have to eat that whole thing too, Nate. Just call that lunch around here. This is a good workout, actually. <laughs> hey, you didn't stack it. No. Oh. <laughs> Stacked, Brandon. <laughs> so now we're done. Now that it's completely pliable, we can roll it out and cut it into panels to wrap around our cake. So I've got a little piece of modeling chocolate here. I've got a rolling pin. I like this one especially because you can put these bands on the side here and it's consistently thick all the way across. So I'm actually gonna cut this down a little bit because we're gonna trim it on the cake, but I don't want it to hang over too much. So I'm just gonna make a nice little circle-y thing to make sure there's no air bubbles. So I got a really, really sharp blade. That's important. And I'm just gonna cut into cake and that'll be our starting point. And then we'll just follow the cake all the way around. So it's a little bit jagged, but once we put uh, the round piece on around it, we actually will smooth this edge and it will become more perfect. Uh, a little over five inches. I'm gonna go five and a quarter and then I'm gonna trim the top kind of like we did the side. By the way, I would have a cake ruler at home. Just a ruler that's just for cake. Cause I don't, I don't know what you're measuring. James. Sorry. Cake ruler. Don't make it weird. <laughs> <laughs> just gonna roll out and make sure we're gonna clear that five and a quarter. Boom. Cleared it. So now I'm gonna actually roll it out lengthwise. There's a bubble. I'm gonna pop this bubble with a, an X-Acto knife. You can use a, a needle if you want. But the best thing about modeling chocolate is that you can just rub it over the blemish and it comes right off. Hashtag no bubbles. That's not a real one. That shouldn't be a real hashtag. I feel like that's probably good. All right, so I'm gonna cut a straight edge for our starting point, And then we'll cut a straight edge all the way across for our bottom. I'm just gonna roll it up. Huh, that's a real Tootsie Roll. That's so corny. And then the straight edge that we cut is actually the bottom edge. So now we have these two pieces that overlap. I'm gonna cut them right in the middle, pull one piece off, 
pull the other piece off and it'll be perfect. All right, so now we're going to cut around the top, kind of like we did before. Boom. Cake surgery. So now that I'm done, I'm just kind of running my hand over the modeling chocolate. You can get rid of any flaws with the heat of your hand. All right, now that the cake is all paneled, I'm gonna put it back in the cooler and I'm gonna panel the other two and then we'll stack the cake. Just keeps getting heavier. Now, so since the tier on top of here is a six inch, I have a six inch board. So this will be my guide to tell me exactly where I should put my dowels. Take a skewer and score it. Now we will insert our bubble tea straws all the way down. Make sure that the pointy side is up. So then to trim these so that you have a flat surface, I'm just gonna take scissors, flush to the cake, we'll pull it up, clip it. And now through the magic of television, I'm gonna do this very fast. All right, now that we are all stacked and level, we are gonna do a drizzly, rubby type chocolate texture. So I'm using a bottle. This is actually not curvature, this is coating chocolate because if we cover the whole cake, we wanna make sure that when it sets, we can cut through it. And add a little bit of oil so it's even softer. And then I'm just gonna paint it on. It's gonna look crazy at first. You guys are gonna think like, what the heck is this guy doing? Once it sets and we add a little bit of gold to it, it's a really, really cool effect. So the chocolate's gonna start to set as you put it on. So just work in sections. And you want it to not be perfect. It needs to have some texture to it because the gold will pick up the light and it'll look really cool. What do we call this technique? Drizzly? Drizzly rubby. Drizzly rubby. Can we trademark that? Okay, now that we have the whole cake covered, I know that she looks crazy. But once we paint over this with gold, it's gonna look like a magical tree trunk. So I'm just gonna dip my brush in a little bit of powder gold. I'm not covering the whole thing. I'm just dusting over it so parts will catch the light. Kinda looks like dragon skin, right? Right, does it look like dragon skin, guys? Boom! Now that we're done with that, we're now gonna start the wreath. So it's time to make our sugar flowers for our floral wreath. I'm starting with this pink uh, sort of gum paste. I'm actually gonna end up dusting it red later, but I wanted to have a little bit of color in there so I'm not taking white all the way to red. So I'm gonna roll the paste out. So gum paste actually dries out really quickly. So you wanna make sure you always keep it covered. So now I'm gonna actually fan this out. So I'm just gonna stretch this guy. So we're thinning one edge. You can keep the bottom a little bit thicker. That's what's gonna wrap around the actual cone. So to glue this onto the cone, I'm actually gonna use a little bit of pasteurized egg white. I'm just gonna brush the cone, and then we're gonna wrap this guy around them. Can a flower be a guy? Yeah, yes. I think so. Okay. So this is gonna be just our little bud. Now we've got our start. So the next round will be three petals. All right, so we're gonna wrap these around one by one, hold all the petals on, and then we'll have to take and stick the places that aren't stuck down. You don't really have to worry about the bottom as much because we're gonna put a calyx on this and you won't see any of this. So this can kind of look gross at the bottom. It'll be covered up. So that's gonna be our first stage. That's for the three. Now we're gonna add the five to make sort of a small to medium sized rose. Then we're gonna add one more round of five petals to get a little bit bigger of a rose and then we'll start to build our wreath. Looks like a real flower. I feel like I can just go, no one ever opened a real flower by blowing in it now. So now, because this is our last row and we want it to be a little bit more open, I'm actually gonna open some of the petals up a little bit and we'll pinch some of them so they look like an actual real rose. So I'm gonna make a bunch more of these and then we're gonna set them aside to dry and then we'll work on our leaves. So the leaves are made a little bit differently because we're not building them on a cone. So we have to actually roll out the gum paste on a board like this, it has some grooves. So then when you pull the paste up, boom, so now we have our little crevices where we can actually insert the wire. You can use a leaf cutter here. I actually prefer cutting my leaves by hand. My hair's really out of control. It's getting bigger and bigger, I think. I don't know what's happening. As the day goes on, it like, she's, it like goes to Jesus. I don't know what's happening. So now we're gonna insert the wire and then we're gonna vein it over this little veining tool. You could actually do this yourself with like a Dresden tool, um, but I kind of, I had this guy for like, I don't know, 10 years, so. And I'm gonna taper the leaf off onto the wire and put it on the veiner and we'll take a little piece of foam like this. And vein it! You don't have to make that sound. You can be gentle. Pull the guy off. We'll do the same thing to his little brother here. So if we leave the leaves just like this, they're gonna dry like they were electrocuted. So I cut a piece of my bed. I'm just kidding. <laughs> 
that actually is very soft. I use either crumpled up foil or a piece of this, uh, what do you call this, egg foam, egg crate? Not memory foam, right? No. James. So see, now if I, if I just lay them over this, they'll have a little bit of life and they'll look like real leaves. So easy. We're gonna do the same thing with these as we did our roses, leave them overnight so they dry hard and then we're gonna dust everything. We gotta dust the ugly underside too. Here's our beautiful red rose that will soon be turned into a floral wreath. I swear, I swear we're getting there. And it's gotta get this. Do you want me to twirl or you want me to twirl this? Cause I can do either <laughs> all day. Grassy green on this side, maybe a little dark in the middle. Let's sort of blend all together. Do the same thing on the back side. And then I actually like to add to the leaves whatever color my flowers are gonna be, just a touch of red, just right here to the bottom. Do you need me to twirl it, Brandon? Ooh. So now that all of our leaves and flowers are dusted, we're gonna start to put the floral wreath together. I've actually added a couple of calyxes to the roses, and I'm gonna show you how to do one. Add a little glue to him, and then we'll just bring them all the way up. Now it's finally time to put our floral wreath together. So now that this side is done, I'm gonna show you the key to how to make this. It's to anchor this flower and then work on this spray and then this spray to complete the arc. So this pick is a little bit large. It's what we used for this guy, but he's too large for this flower. So what I'm gonna do is actually use a straw. So then we're pr protecting the cake, but we're not using something that's ginormous that we can't cover up. So I'm just gonna make a tiny little hole exactly opposite of this flower. My exacto, I'll add my straw piece and that will be where that guy sits. So now we'll build the arc. So I'm gonna start by making the bottom side of the arc. I'm gonna start with a tiny leaves and tape my way up, adding a smaller rose and some filler flowers that I bought from the store. With each one, I'm just wrapping the tape around and going on to the next one until I reach the medium sized rose. Then I connect it to the medium sized rose and start on the top part of the arc. Now I tape it all together and anchor it into the straw. For the final touch, I'm gonna add a large rose next to the focal point and do the same thing with the straw so the wire does not touch the cake. Thank you for joining me on our very first episode of Man About Cake. I think she turned out pretty good. Let me know in the comments below, like the video and subscribe to the channel and I will bring you a new cake each week. Let's cut the cake, guys. See you next week, guys. Good. What's wrong?